Hello and welcome to Colin Bradley Artcast. I'm Stephen Bradley. And I'm Colin Bradley. How you doing Hi, today, Steve. Dad? Hey, I'm, I'm all right. How are you? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Not too bad, not too bad. Another busy week. You had a busy week? Uh, not, not art-wise, I haven't, particularly. I just finished off a picture. That's what I've done. And I've uh, watched it back, and it, it was quite an involved one. I won't talk about it now, because I, I'll get people licking their lips, thinking, oh, I want to see it, I want to see it. But it's a very good one, I can tell them that. Uh, but it took me a little while. Uh, normally, I can get a picture done uh, within a few days, but this has taken a little bit longer. So, uh, But uh, I finished that off this week, and um, we've been still trying to sort our downstairs out, which we are making progress now at last. So um, so otherwise, yes, we're fairly busy. Excellent, excellent. Well, we've had a few emails this week, uh, a few questions that we're going to talk about. So thank you, everyone, for sending those in. Let's start with Susan's email. Uh, Susan says, Hi, Steve. I noticed that a lot of the older classes... From Colin, he used the Fabriano Ongre paper, which I have bought several pads from your site. But now, a lot of the newer classes use pastel mat, which I absolutely love. Are there any older classes that you can't exchange the use of Ongre for pastel mat? I, I wouldn't say so, no. Uh, the only thing with that is, with, with Ongre, you didn't need to use quite so much pastel. And the reason being that it wouldn't take light over dark, for instance, very well, where a pastel mat will. So you can work better with pastel mat in terms of m more application of pastel. Uh, but that, of course, also where I was doing some of the um, pictures with Ongre, uh, I didn't push my luck with them. You know, in other words, I I, I left it quite. Uh, they they were very very nice and I, I thoroughly enjoyed doing it at the time but I didn't have any alternatives um, so I, I kind of held back a lot uh, knowing the restrictions or the limitations of, pas of the um, Ongre paper now with Pastomat you don't have to do that you can just go to town and do the pictures that I've been doing and, uh, and I'm sure is it Susan? Susan's been doing too and once you once you come into pastel mat, then I can understand people not really wanting to go back to Ongre again, but you haven't got the uh, you haven't got the scope that you have with pastel mat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Well, uh, I hope that answers your question, Susan, and anyone else out there that's wondering. Um, it's just the application that you still recommend Ongre for beginners. Um, oh yes, I, I would say so because. Well, pastel mat's quite hard if you if you're just starting out, because you've got to fill it up, and the temptation is not to fill it up. And if you don't fill it up, you get patches that have not got the concentration of colour or tone that you need for it. So I think that's that's um, the problem. Uh, but um, yes, I, I wouldn't go back to Ongre now. I haven't done that for quite a long time, and I can't see me doing it now. We've progressed. Yeah, oh, absolutely, and there's plenty of subjects that will take beginners through using Ongre mm. uh, into the into the experience that they need for pastel mat. So, mm. yeah, the, the progression is there. Lovely. Excellent. Well, thank you, Susan, for your question. Uh, moving on to the next one, which comes from Anna. Hi, Colin and Steve. I hope you are well. I've been enjoying your podcasts. Uh, they're great, and people's questions have been very useful. Um, I actually have a question, if that's okay. What is the biggest size pastel paper that you reasonably draw on and frame? I'm wondering if the bigger the size, the harder it is to frame a drawing. I understand that having a double mount stops the pastel from touching the glass, but I assume that something like an A2 piece would be too hard to frame without the middle sections touching the glass. Um, let's answer that bit first. Well, certainly that is, is a good point. I wouldn't do a picture large... At the moment, I wouldn't do a picture larger than the size of the 
standard pastel map paper that we use, which is l less than a... Um, it's about a... Is it a two, A3? I think it's just less than A3. It's inside. 24 by 32, so yeah, slightly yeah. bigger than A4. A4, yes, but A3 is, is it's not as big as A3. I used to use A3 quite a lot uh, when I first started out. Um, but I did have a problem with, that mentioned um, by Anna, where you have the pastel can touch the glass once it's um, framed. So I had to use double mounts and sometimes even treble mounts to push that away from the glass. So it is a problem. But I, if you ask me now, would I do it? No, I wouldn't. The, the biggest picture I do now, the biggest picture I've done recently, is just less than the size of the large pastel paper, um, pastel mat paper. Generally speaking, A4 is my favourite, uh, and just less than A4, if I can get away with it. Because I think pastel, the, the problem with pastel, if you should call it a problem, is it takes a lot of filling up with a oil or acrylic or watercolour. You can splash it on with a brush and you, you can cover a large area very quickly. With a pastel, you can't do that so easily uh, unless you use soft pastel and it's not a good idea. I don't think it's a good idea to use soft pastel and pastel pencil together uh, in a picture. Very often you see me adding soft pastel too. Uh, a pastel pencil picture and that works very well so I think it's a question of size really the bigger you go the more uh, tricky it is to frame and certainly to post if you're posting them uh, if you're sending them that, away is that, that another actually, that's Anna's second point that she makes um, oh, right. so mm. I'm also wondering about shipping I do mm. commissions on A4 but I have had people suggest I do bigger sizes such as A2 or even A1. This may be harder in terms of shipping a picture off to someone without the packaging touching it. So I'm not sure yes, what to do. As absolutely. It would be lovely to draw bigger pieces, but it will be difficult. So. Well, I, I wouldn't do it. I definitely wouldn't do it. The largest I would do is the, the size that I've said. Simply because you can explain to people, really, that if you're using pastel pencil, that is. I mean, if you're using another medium, it, this doesn't apply so much. The pastel pencil, you can tell people that it looks better if it's uh, kept to that minimum size of um, either A3 or, as I've said, pastel map size or A4. I haven't done an A... I haven't done a big picture for quite some time. Now, there's two reasons for that. One is that I'd have to pull the camera too far away and it would be more difficult for me to contain the um, the image. Um, so it's better for me to have it smaller. But I also prefer to have it smaller simply because I can complete a picture and fill it up with detail that I have. Now, I'm a detail person, as you know. So therefore, if I have a big picture, I've got to put all the detail in it. That takes forever, forever. And I, I don't know whether I've got the patience to do that. You also, so the difficulty, just to touch on again, the shipping, is that you that you run that risk the bigger you go um, of, of yeah. having something. So if you, you, you could send something, uh, your picture already double mounted or triple mounted, couldn't you, um, and package mm. it, but you're still the packaging touching it i imagine you'd what? have to almost have it framed mm. wouldn't you yes and then bubble wrap it i remember years ago um i did send one i can't i can't remember the details now it was a long time ago i did send the picture off to somebody and what i used to do was quite rightly double mount or treble mount it and but then took two pieces of hardboard at the front and the back and then wrapped it up there because that, if you've got a stiff hardboard, not something that's too flexible, that, well, it did work in that case because the person got it okay. But that, of course, it's adding quite a lot of weight to the picture as well. So it's going to cost more money. The, if it gets bigger than that, then you've really got to crate it up. And that's just, that's just prohibitive. I wouldn't do it and certainly wouldn't recommend it. Sounds like a lot of hassle. <laughs> oh, certainly. 
don't go down that road. You, you've got to be nice to people and say, look, I, I'm sorry, I can't do it any bigger than the pictures that I've, um, that I've been doing um, because I can do a nice job and a good job and I can get them to you fairly safely. If they don't like that, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, I'm a bit mercenary. I wouldn't do it if it was me. Well, good question, Anna. Um, and I hope that's helped. I mean, I know that there's a lot of tricky things you've got to overcome if you do decide to do bigger pictures um, and posting it is going to be uh, a bit tricky. But, but, you know, there are obviously ways to, to protect it. You can try the hardboard technique, double mount it, put hardboard either side, um, crate it up, um, you know, try and make it so that it's, it can't move around as much. Um, but it's it's going to be tricky and you obviously have to make sure that you are going to get those costs back and that you factor those into your commission and what you're charging because the, the weight is going to go up and a, a big crate or a big parcel is going to obviously cost a lot to send as well. Um, okay, thank you, Anna. Moving on to our next question from Dan. Hi, Stephen Colin. I hope this finds you both healthy and happy. I'm really enjoying the video podcasts and I look forward to each one. I've just finished the train in shadow picture and it was so much fun. I think I'm hooked on these shadow pictures. I've always wanted to draw a, a paint a World War II Liberty ship and I thought it might be a good candidate for a shadow picture. I found this photograph, I'm going to pop it on screen, from the Liberty as from the Library of Congress, which is copyright free. Do you think that this picture would be a good fit uh, would fit the shadow style with perhaps a bit of cropping. I was also thinking about trying the Medway Queen picture, but in pastel pencil. I did it in graphite a while back, but I thought it'd be fun to try it in pastel. Would the same color palette in the uh, used in the Lady in Umbrella be a good fit for the Queen? So let's touch on Dan's first. Um, Yes. Yes. Well, well, as far as the shadow picture is concerned, if you ask me, would I do it? I would say I wouldn't because it doesn't have it doesn't have the quality. You wouldn't be able to get the quality that you can get with shadow pictures. There's a lot of sky for one thing, and that would have to be light. Um, so and it, the image itself would be lost in that. It would look, be a, a dark if you use the shadow picture colors. I mean, those are the four colors that we use. It would be like a blob in the middle and and also the other problem you've got there is the, the, the water that's another thing that's going to be quite hard to do anyway uh, so I, I I personally wouldn't do it but if you want to have a go have a go but the only, only thing I would say is you've got to make sure that what you look what you're looking at on the ship um, the dights and the darks are adhered to you can't make it just one dark image it's got to have that uh, break up of tones of um, shades uh, so if you see a light bit you put a light bit in if you see a dark bit you put a dark bit in one of the problems I've always found when you're doing um, pictures like that like cars airplanes trains you've got to you've got to be mindful that people know what they're looking at and if if you if you try to fudge something and say oh well I'll just put that on I'll just put a blob here that'll do or I I'll interpret it the way I think it should be done then you'll get somebody saying it doesn't look like that that doesn't look like a whatever and uh, so you've got to be careful there as well when you're doing that kind of thing um now the other thing is I would certainly if it was me doing it I would do the um, picture using the image, the um, pencils from the Lady with the Umbrella. I think there were five, was it five or six? There are. Um, I will read them out anyway, for they're... anyone that hasn't got them to hand. Um, they are 101, this is all Faber Castell pastel pencils 101, mm. 230, 233, 181, and 199. Yes, five. Um, that gives you an extra pencil. That, that's quite important, actually. Because the lady with an umbrella, I, there was different tones. If, if you remember looking at that, I had a, a background there. The lady was all in dark. That was that was the idea. It was a shadow. Um, but from then onwards, the foreground and and the background was was um, more um, reminiscent of a black and white photograph. And 
you can do that. I think that would be probably better to use rather than the shadow picture colours, which are, are in, too intense, in my opinion. And you would be able to create all of those uh, images that I said, all those different um, parts of the of the ship mm. quite successfully. It might even help you with the water there because you've got an extra colour. Mm. You also... Um sent me a, a cropped version because mm. uh, i mentioned about cropping are we looking at are we looking at the original at the moment or are we looking at the cropped one we are shall i flash up the cropped one yes that's a good idea because um i can talk about that too if you've got the cropped one there yep go on in but, well the crop one you can see i've cut down the sky i've cut down the water and you'll bless me for that because but I've left enough of it in there to make it sensible. It's no good just putting the boat in without any kind of atmosphere or or detail that goes around it. Uh, and I think that would be better. It does, maybe it, you probably, when you look at it, you think, well, it doesn't look a lot different to the one I've just seen. It's quite a bit. I chopped quite a lot of sky and quite a lot of water off mm. and brought the sides in. So that that in my opinion, would be um, a sensible uh, thing to tackle. Okay, with that colour palette as well that you mentioned. I, I, I would say so. I mean, there's no you can, people can do what they like, and but it doesn't lend itself, in my opinion, to the shadow pictures that we've been used to using, especially the train, because there was a lot of dark in that train, and the sky was also um, very dark. And I, I would... You probably could do the similar sort of thing to the with the boat, but you've got some nice smoke coming out of the uh, f the funnel there, and that would look good or better against a lighter sky. Mm. Which Lovely. was the other way with the train, if I remember, wasn't it? Wasn't it um, light and oh, I can't remember. It's a long way, long while ago now. I can't remember yeah, it. it was, but... uh, yeah, no, that was light smoke. Yeah, that was light smoke, I believe, coming out. I can't anyway. Remember. But, but and, and I'm always struck when I see a picture like that and, and I'm, I'm struck with it and think I could I see it as a shadow picture, even though it's it, it's, it doesn't um, absolutely represent it on the uh, image. But I do see it as an, and I can see what I can do with it, what I can leave out, what I can put back and change and so on. Lovely. Hope that helps. Excellent. Well, thanks, Dan, for sending that over um, and your picture. All the best with it. Wish you all the best with that picture. And do let us know how it goes. We'd love to see the finished picture. Um, and thank you, Dad, for all of that advice. People have uh, got their money's worth this week. Well, well, that's that's what we're doing it for, isn't it? And I'm glad that uh, people are interested enough to send the um, uh, queries in. Um, I've usually got an answer, or I've already been there, done that situation, you know. So, um, but this is lovely because the um, the pictures I'm doing at the moment, as you know from last week and, and a few weeks ago, they are getting more involved and uh, or evolving. And uh, this latest one I've done is exactly that. It, you can you get the feeling that, and when I'm looking for subjects now, I'm looking for subjects that would challenge me really which in turn will of course challenge our members too absolutely well i have seen your latest picture maybe we'll talk about that one next week because it mm. is a special one um, yes that we can do is, yes, i think it's a nice idea there's some others well um <clears throat> a couple of flower pictures and that i did that you haven't showed yet but um that that is a particular a lovely picture and i think people when they see it they will be gobsmacked with it yeah me too me too in the meantime um please do send over any more questions any queries anything you'd have us uh, you'd like us to talk about then we can always bring it up uh, either next week or the week after um but we'll leave it there for this week so thank you everyone for watching and listening i'm stephen bradley and i'm colin bradley enjoy, enjoy your week, week.